Good morning. Everybody doing good today? Awesome. Well, I just want to, um, I just want to have fun this morning, and, and what I want to share with you this morning, I want to change your attitude towards this word, because when we hear this word, everybody's like, yuck. Nobody likes this word. This is a four-letter word that, honestly, I know I do. I feel like probably I'm, I'm in good company here today. We try to avoid this word. We try to run from this word. We try to escape this word at all costs. And this four-letter word is spelled like this. P, everybody say with me, P-A-I-N, pain. So I want to talk to you this morning about good pain. Amen? Because you know pain is a part of life. Is that right? Can I get a testimony? Is pain a part of life? Raise your hand if pain has been a part of your life at some point. Well, I mean, on Mother's Day, we can't help but think about childbirth and the pain that we go through, a woman goes through, because God prepares us and tells us in Genesis 21 that, that we're going to have pain in childbirth. Right, ladies? Anybody testify? I can't help but think about uh, my daughter when we found out, when they came and shared the news that they were going to have give us our first grandchild and all the excitement and, and the joy and that we were feeling at the moment. And, and that night when we laid down in bed, it hit me. It's like, my daughter's got to have a baby. That's great. But I know four times over what she's going to be facing, <laughs> the pain that comes with this. And I know my daughter. <laughs> and a lot of you probably remember stories of my daughter if you run into her pediatrician who is now ret retired, Dr. Jeffrey Hull, out on the street somewhere, and you went up to him and you said, Dr. Hull, who is your worst patient ever? I guarantee you, I'm not exaggerating, he would say, Kayla Coots. <laughs> he liked to joke up until, I mean, right before he retired, and we were in there with the girls, and he said, he'd talk about Kayla. He said, because his office was at the Decatur uh, General Hospital where they've got the walkway, he said, we could hear you as soon as you opened the doors to come across that crosswalk. We could hear her screaming, bloody murder. And he said, she'd scream the whole time she was in here. You could hear her screaming all the way out the door. And that's the truth. I mean, even as an infant, when we had to carry her to the doctor, it was like, have anybody heard a mad cat sound? That's the way this kid sounded. I mean, like demonic. I'm like, I thought I had a baby, not a demon. And so, I mean, it would honestly, as a baby, Big Daddy can witness to this. We were in Gulf Shores with him when she was about eight months old, and we had to carry in the emergency room down there. It took, like, several of us to hold down an eight-month-old baby. So, so then when she got old enough to know we were going to the doctor, I had to hear it all the way, her begging me, crying out to take me. And when we'd get to the red light there on Somerville Road, I mean, that's when she'd really start in screaming. So here I'm thinking, this child has got to give birth. This kid who screams at the side of a doctor, a dentist, eye doctor. I mean, she was still won't even let him dilate her eyes. And, I mean, when we go to the dentist, it was the same way. We'd have to hold her down. So, you know what I did as a mom? I mean, it's one thing when you yourself has to go through pain, but think about your child having to go through that same pain. That's another ball game. But I began to dig in to God and pray for my child because I knew what was ahead. I knew there was joy and a bond that would come of this like no other. But I knew the pain that was ahead for her. So I began to dig in and pray for her. She, it quickly hit her. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to have to give birth to this child. Yeah, baby, she can do it. So guess what? She began to dig in. And the, those that knew Kayla knew how bad she was. They began to dig in and pray for her. And let me tell you, she come through that birth in flying colors. And, and she had a bond with her baby and also with God. It increased her capacity to trust God. It increased her capacity for pain. Now she knows she can do greater things. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later, is increasing our capacity. Amen? You know, we're always trying to avoid things that are painful and unpleasant. Anybody besides me? That's why we always are wanting to move. Well, let's move to, move to the city. No, let's move to the country. Well, let's get away from this person. Well, no, let's move over here and get away from that person. Well, let's change jobs. I don't like my boss or I don't like my coworkers. Let's move here. Let's move there. Let's change jobs. Let's change relationships. You know, it's getting tough in this marriage. I can't do this anymore, so I'm gone. Because why? 
some pain you're having to face maybe in it. Amen? Friendships. How many of you had friendships that you're no longer friends with? Because something come up. Some pain may come up in your relationship. So you just end the relationship. You just run. People change churches because sometimes it gets stinky and messy in churches. Amen? Anybody ever been a part of ministry? You know how they spell ministry? It's actually bleedership. Leadership is called bleedership sometimes. So what happens a lot of times, even ministers, when it gets too tough, we run. Amen? Well, the enemy wants you to feel a sense of loss with pain. That is his goal, to have you feel a sense of loss, to have you feel weak, overwhelmed, out of control. Anybody felt that way when you're going through pain? He wants pain to paralyze you and make you think that you'll never get past it. You'll never get over this. What he did to you, you'll never get past it. What she did to you, you can't go on. How can you? There's no hope. You cannot get past this. Yes, you can. You see, pain is something that everyone deals with at some point in your life. There's scripture that backs this up that says, brothers and sisters all over the world are going through things just like you. And my pain may be a little different from your pain, but pain is pain. Amen? I want you today to allow God to turn your pain into power. Amen? Everybody say power. power. Lamentations 3, 22 through 24 says this. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. So through God, no matter what your pain is, no matter what you're facing, his word tells you you are not consumed because he has mercy for you. Because his compassions fail not, God will not fail you. Amen? They're, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Where is your hope place this morning? I want to talk about the drought in 2 Kings. There was a drought. There was no rain, no water for the people, for the animals. I mean, these people were in serious need and pain. In 2 Kings 3, 15 through 17, it says this. But now, bring me a musician. Then it happened, when the musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. I want to stop right there. What do you, what's that sound like to you guys? Sound like they knew that worship needed to come first. Amen? See the importance of worship? Bring me a musician. When they begin to play, the hand of the Lord was upon them. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. In other words, get to digging. Get your shovel out. You may have some pain. You may have to do some work. Get to digging. Amen? Amen. Thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. They wouldn't go see no rain for their water. What did they have to do? They had to dig. They had to get to digging. See, on the surface, there, there was no water. But all they had to do was dig. Sometimes you got to dig a little deeper. Scholars say they all, uh, that all they really had to do was dig about four feet and they would hit rock and that there was water already flowing. The water was already there. They just had to dig a little deeper. You see, God said that he was going to fill their valley with water, but God wants to fill your life with his living water. Amen? Amen. Dig a little deeper. Yeah. Dig a little deeper. Don't quit. It was the drought that caused them to dig a little deeper. The cross caused Jesus to dig a little deeper. See, he prayed so hard that he sweat drops of blood. Luke twenty-two forty-four says this, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then he, he sweat, his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. I'd say that's digging a little deeper, wouldn't you? He takes the pain of the cross and he turns it into the power of the resurrection. And that's what God wants us to do in our pain. He wants what the enemy has meant to harm us, to try to kill us, to destroy us, and turn that into the power of the resurrection because he's already made the way. He's already done it for us. All we got to do is follow his example and dig a little deeper. Amen? God doesn't um, allow pain in our lives to destroy us. I know a lot of us think that, God, what are you doing? Are you trying to kill us? What are you doing? 
He doesn't allow that pain to destroy you, but he allows it to empower you. Amen? Amen. See, the enemy wants you to think you can't go on. You can't get past it. But God wants to empower you. Paul had pain in his life, and this pain caused Paul to dig a little deeper. We know that Paul had a thorn in his flesh. The Greek word for thorn is steak, and I'm not talking about the kind you grill and eat. I'm talking a steak. Has anybody ever seen a steak before? You know what it looks like. It said that he had a steak in his side, in his flesh. We don't know what this was. I know there's a lot of people that think a lot of different things. We don't know. But we do know that it was something painful and that it tormented him. Amen? Paul even called it a messenger of Satan. He pleaded with God three times. Take it away, God. Take it away. But here's what God tells him in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, but that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul goes on to say, when I am weak, then I am strong. He knew how to turn his pain into power. Amen? Do you know how to turn your pain into power? Then we've got Job. How many would say Job suffered? Job had some pain. He had lost everything. Everything that he had was gone. And he had no support from anyone. All he had was some bad advice he was uh, receiving from some so-called friends. If anybody ever received bad advice? Job thought God had left him. Have you ever felt that way? But we know he don't because the word says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Job was angry. And he was a sick man covered in sores. Think about this. Think about your body covered in painful sores. And you know what he had to do to get relief? He'd take broken pieces of clay and scrape his sores just to get a little relief from it. But under the surface, under the surface, he knew that he had to dig deeper into God. And that's what he done. He dug a little deeper into God. Job 122 says, and all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. In other words, he wasn't blaming God. God, why'd you do this? God, why'd you take my family? God, why'd you take my income? Why, God, why? Why'd you do this to me? He wasn't saying that. He wasn't blaming God. He was trusting him. Job 13, 15 says, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Think about that. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Job 19.25 says, For I know my Redeemer lives. Do you know your Redeemer lives in your pain? Do you? Though he may try to, things in life may try to slay you, will you trust him? It's easy to say yeah when things are going good, amen? amen? See, many times we don't get past the surface. We're scratching at the sore. Well, we just need to dig a little deeper. Amen? Amen. T.F. Tenney says this. God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks to us in our conscience. But he shouts to us in our pain. God uses pain as a megaphone. That's what pain is to God. It's his megaphone. Amen? Amen? Maybe it's because we're more desperate during times of pain. Maybe we're hungrier for God. I don't know why. But all I know is he uses it as his megaphone. I know he has in my life. Psalms 119, 49 through 50 says, Never forget your promise to me, your servant, for they are my only hope. Thy give me strength in all my troubles, how they refresh and revive me. You see, pain's going to prepare you for what's ahead. Your capacity, what I talked about earlier with Kayla, it grew her capacity going through that, knowing, having confidence, not only in herself but in God, to know that she could, with Christ, she could do all things. See, your capacity of pain will determine your growth. How much can you take? Ever how much you can take, that's how much you're going to grow. Think about athletes. Do we got any athletes in here? Got some? What do they do in training? They train in pain. Has anybody trained or anything before? It's painful. 
but they train in pain so they can play in pain because you know sometime during a game or whatever you're doing, pain's going to be there. And you've got to continue to play on in that pain. Why? So they can play through the pain. Why? So they can play after the pain. There's always more life after pain. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever it is, the sun's going to rise tomorrow. There's always life after the pain. There's always life after a storm. Amen? Amen. Let's talk about Noah. Genesis 9.28. It says that Noah lived 350 years after the flood, after the storm that came through, after, I'm sure, Noah had some pain during this time. After all that, he still lived 350 years. There's always life after pain. So I want to encourage you, stop running from the pain. I want you to learn to embrace it. Learn through it. Grow your capacity through it by digging a little deeper into God. Amen? Dig a little deeper. Everybody say, dig a little deeper. You see, pain is where we usually grow closer to God rather than, our, in, rather than in our successes. Most people don't grow um, in their relationship with God when they're having success and everything's going good. Think about it. Charles Spurgeon said this, I never grew in grace until I grew in pain. And think about, I, I can say for myself, um, when I've gone through things before, I have more compassion for other people. If I haven't gone through something somebody else is going through, I try to have compassion, but it's easier when you've gone through that before. You know what they're feeling. Take, for instance, before you have children, my kids will never act like that. My kids will never do that. My kids will never talk to me like that. My kids will never, you know, how many have said that? How many have said my kids will never? And then what happens? You usually end up eating your words, don't you? <laughs> I have. So now, some things that we went through with parenthood, I have more compassion now for other parents that are going through that. The toddler in the restaurant screaming and pitching a fit instead of me. Won't they make it? Won't they spank that kid and make it hood? <laughs> Anybody ever said that? You have your own doing it. And you have spanked your child, and it still won't hush. Amen? <laughs> but it, it, it does. Um, for some reason, when, when everything's going good, for some reason, we just don't seem to dig as deep with God. But when we're in pain, when, when we're going through things, it makes us dig deeper. It makes us have more compassion. I want to read that one more time. Y'all may want to write that down. Charles Spurgeon said, I never grew in grace until I grew in pain. Psalms 119.67 says this, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Psalms 119.71 says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statues. So I want to ask you, what will make you dig a little deeper? What's going to make you dig deeper in, into God and into his word? When you begin to dig deeper, just make sure you're digging for the right things. Amen? See, some of us are digging, some folks are digging, but all they're digging is a hole. When God wants you to dig a well and tap into the living water. See, wrong decision after wrong decision, upset about this, upset about that, holding on to things, holding grudges, jealous, mad. They did this, they said that, they done this. Holding on to that. All the while, we're living smaller than the big things God wants to do rather than living bigger than the small things that seem to rule our world. God wants, has got bigger things for you than these little petty things we're holding on to. And you might, like, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what he did. You don't know what she did. You don't know. Well, you don't know what I've been through. But I was determined at a young age. Now, don't get me wrong. I ain't always done it right, and I'm not perfect. But for some reason, God gave me enough sense not to hold on to things and to forgive and to let go. So you can grow in God. You can grow in grace. Not to become a victim. I'm a victor. I am not a victim. I determined that at a very young age in my life. I had some things done to me that should never be done to a child. 
Now, I could stand up here and, and be mad and hold on to that, and that was not my fault. It was totally not my fault. But I could stand up here and be a victim. But where's the power in that? Do you want to be pitiful or do you want to be powerful? And you're not going to get powerful going around talking about your pity party to everybody. Amen? Amen. And I'm not mad. I know my kids say, Mom, you seem mad when you preach it. It's, 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 I love you guys. It's passion. Amen? <laughs> See, like I said, we can hold on to pain. We can hold on to bad attitudes. We can hold on to our bad decisions, our anger, our hurt feelings that cause us to dig a deeper hole while other people are digging a well. Do you want to dig a hole or do you want to dig a well? Do you want to dig into the living waters of God or do you want to sit there poor and pitiful and upset and mad and angry? Hallelujah. I praise to be a victor and not a victim. How about you? Stand to your faith this morning. Get up. Get up. Get up. I feel God saying lift your hands and say, I am a victor in the name of Jesus. I will not give in to pain. I will not give in to the pity party that the enemy wants to trap me in. Amen. All right, sit down. That's enough. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to get like that. I'm not mad. Kids, I'm not mad. Mom's okay. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Saul and David. I'm having fun. Anybody else having fun? All right. Saul, how many of you would say that Saul was a pain for David? Has anybody ever had any pains in your life like that? I mean, a pain that was they were out to kill you. I mean, not just talk about you, literally kill you dead. Anybody ever had that kind of pain in a person? Well, but what did David do? What kind of attitude did David have? David had his chance to kill Saul, but he didn't do it. Saul's going to the bathroom in a cave. That could have killed him. They did take part of his garment to show him, but he didn't. Why? This is why I believe. Because David had a different attitude about it. He looked at Saul, get this, as his mentor. You're like, y'all are looking at me like I'm crazy, aren't you? But listen, Saul taught David what not to do as king. Amen? Take what someone else may have done to you, said to you, however they may have hurt you, and learn from it. Learn what not to do. Learn what not to say. Amen? Y'all okay? Learn from it. That's what I want you to do. Learn from it. Learn, learn, learn. Dig a little deeper. Sometimes what we see as an enemy, guess what? May just be your mentor. Amen? How many has got lots of mentors in your life? Let me see witness. <laughs> That's the way we need to think like David. We've got to change our attitude. Amen? They will teach us. They will grow us. They will take us forward and enable us into st to step into what God has for us. Question is, though, are you going to get better or are you going to get bitter? Do you want to be better or do you want to be bitter? That's a choice we've all got to make. That's a choice I had to make. That's a choice every person has to make. If you've got kids that have gone through things with, with their daddies and, 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 and their mamas and, 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 and siblings and all that junk, don't let them stay in that mess. Don't let them be a victim. It's hard. We want to baby them and love them through it. And you do that. But you don't let them remain there. Don't do that. Don't let them become a victim. Let them be a victor. Amen? Amen. Because you know what? You're going to be one of these. You're either going to be bitter or you're going to be better. Let me encourage you to dig deep. Dig deeper into grace and forgiveness. Stop holding on to that pain that somebody hurt you. Forgive. Let it go. The biggest mistake we make is having a pity party. How many's had a pity party besides me? Please don't make me feel like I'm the only one that's ever had a pity party. Well, see, that the problem with the pity party is the only people that will show up or the only person that will show up is the devil. <laughs> Nobody else wants to show up to your pity party. Amen. And who in the world is a pity party going to help? See, I not only got God and the Holy Ghost, but I got y'all's preacher. And he's as bad as them about not letting me have a pity party. Sometimes I just want to have a pity party. No, when 
he's around. I have to wait till he's gone before I have my pity party. So. <laughs> but seriously, pity parties don't help nobody. They sure don't help us. And they sure aren't make, helping us be, make a difference in the lives of others, which God's called us to do. I want to make a difference in the lives of others. See, I, I heard something. If I can get this right, I just find my notes. But um, what I do for myself dies with me. But what I do for others, the difference I make in others, lives on even after I'm dead and gone. So I want to encourage you. Make a difference in someone else's life. A lot of the pain you may be facing is because you're just, like, you're stuffed up. I don't mean math or something. <laughs> I saw you, Martha. I couldn't help it. Because the, the living waters can't flow. You're all stopped up because you're so full of stuff. <laughs> That's all I mean. But you got all this stuff inside you that God wants you to pour out, pour into others. But you, and so you're just, oh, you're, have you ever been that stopped up? You're that miserable. I'm being serious. It's to think about it. When you've got all this stuff inside you that God has poured in you and wants to do to you. I'm not saying that word. I'm going to say. When you begin to let that flow and you let life flow from you, live in waters. I mean, have, have you ever experienced when you are having a hard time but somebody comes to you and, and needs help and needs some counsel and some prayer and you're like, but God, I got all this going on in my life. But you do it anyway. And by the time you're done praying, like you're like, whoo, hallelujah, you got set free too in it. I'm telling you, there's something to it. Make a difference. This, let this week be your goal. Pick at least one person to make a difference in their life this week. Amen? Amen. Psalms 119.59 says this, I thought about the wrong direction in which I was headed and turned around and came running back to you. I thought about, Lord, when I'm going in this hole, when I'm digging my hole, when I'm in my pity party, I've thought about it, God. I had the Holy Spirit telling me, speaking to me. I had my husband telling me, and I turn and I run back to God because ain't nobody got time for that mess. Amen? Amen? It says, I thought about the wrong direction in which I was headed and turned around and came running, running. Not walking, not crawling, not, well, all right, I guess I better get over this. Preacher said I better forgive them. Preacher said I need to do this. I come running back to you. See, in conclusion, it's just like weightlifters. Does anybody lift weights? You can tell I don't lift weights, but my husband does, so I know a little bit about it, not much. Um, but do we have any other weightlifters in here? Got one back there. We got three. Oh, okay. We got some weightlifters. Ah, right. well, just like a weightlifter, they train with a bar and weights to gain more strength, right? You start out with a little bit. You, you get used to that. You just a little more. What are you doing? You're growing your capacity, right? Right? You're gaining more strength to become stronger and stronger and stronger till one day before you know it, you're a heavy lifter. You got heavy lifter title. Yeah, I'm a heavy lifter. No, not me. But anyway, you're a heavy lifter. Well, guess what? We must learn to train through our pain so that we be can, can become stronger through our pain. Oh, I'm going through some things. But God, I'm trusting you. God, I'm digging deeper. I'm going through this. God, I'm growing my capacity. God, I'm getting there. God, I'm doing this with you. So that we can be heavy lifters for God. Who wants to be a heavy lifter for God? God tells us in John 16, These things I have spoken to you. That in me, you may have peace. In him, you will have peace. See, we all looking for peace. We all want peace. Peace, peace, peace. We got to dig deeper. We got to look for it in him. In the world, you will have tribulation. I think we get that backwards. I think we tried to find peace in the world. I think we tried to find peace in things and relationships and money and success. And all that time, we're not digging into God. 
We need to reverse it. We need to do what the scripture says. We've got to find peace in him and know that in this world, we're going to have tribulation. God's preparing us. It amazes me at the people that when you go through something, you're like, I mean, it devastates you. You're like, oh, my gosh, how can, how can this happen? I'm not going to make it. And How could God do this to me? He's telling us. It's not a surprise. If, if you've dug into his word, you're going to see this. You're going to have tribulation in this world. As long as you're living here, I hate to break it to you, honey, you're going to have trouble. Stuff's going to happen. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. God has already overcome this world. This isn't going to last. This is temporary. We try to make this stuff that's temporary seem like it's permanent forever. It's not. He has overcome this world. There will come a day when we will not have to deal with pain. Is that good news? Everybody like that, don't you? Revelation 21.4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Forever. That'd be wonderful. But until then, we're going to deal with some pain. We're going to deal with some stuff. We're going to have trials. We're going to have frustrations. We're going to have people getting on our nerves. But let me encourage you, dig deeper and trust that God can use your pain and what the enemy meant to harm you, because he wants to. That's what the scripture says. He wants to not just harm you. He wants to kill you, and he wants to destroy you. So you better have some backbone. You better get to digging. Get your shovels. Everybody go get them a shovel today and get to digging. Because what he meant to do all that, God says he, he's going to use it for your good and his glory. Amen? It is time we develop. You may want to write this down if you're taking notes. It is time we develop a spiritual sight, spiritual sight that can see beyond the constant fight. Develop your spiritual sight. Dig a little deeper. And see beyond this stuff that's going on that the enemy's trying to trap you down, weight you down. God's got a plan for you, and it's a good plan. And it's a plan to prosper you. Do I have all the answers why all this bad stuff happens? I don't. I don't know. But all I know is I will trust him. Will you trust him this morning? Will you trust him this morning? I did sound real. Do I need to preach this again? I think I do. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Like Job 13, 15. Can you say this? Though he may slay me, I will trust him. Can you say that? And whatever is going on in your life, Though these things are trying to slay me, yet I will trust him. Can you say in your pain, my Redeemer lives? Can you say that this morning? I want you to bow your head, close your eyes. If you are in here this morning and you have never accepted Jesus Christ, you are digging a hole. You are digging a hole that you... The only way you can get out is to reach your hand to Jesus and say, Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, you are my redeemer, and I know you live. Come into my life. Help me. Look, I go through things. I've been through things, painful things. But through them, I knew my redeemer lived. I knew I could trust him. But those of you that are in here, maybe that had never accepted Jesus, I can't have feeling the weight can't imagine the weight upon you, how you're feeling, the loneliness, how the enemy has just, like you said, you've dug this hole, you're down in it, you feel buried, you feel trapped, like there's no hope. But with Jesus, there's always hope. So today is your day. Today is your day to lift your hand and say, I will trust you. My Redeemer lives. I don't have to do this alone. I can begin to dig my well of living water. So if that's you here this morning, if you've gone through hurt and pain, I want to introduce you to someone who can take that from you and ease that pain. And you can crawl up in his arms. You can call him daddy because he's your daddy. He's your creator. So I want to ask you this morning, on the count of three, if you have never, ever prayed that prayer, 
Today is your day. I can see him standing there with his arms open wide. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. Today is your day. One, two, three. Lift your hand this morning if you're in this house and you've never, ever prayed the prayer of salvation. Anyone. Amen. That means we are got a house full of saved folks that need to be out inviting unsaved folks. If you're here today and you've let pain, disappointment, maybe your faith you feel like it's been bruised, and you've just kind of dug a hole, and you've had your pity party. But today, you want to reach that hand up to God. You want to say, Jesus, you are my redeemer, and you do live. Take hold of his hand this morning. God, though, though, though these things try to slay me, I trust you. If that's you, if that's you this morning, you want to turn back to God. You want to, I, you've thought about the way you were going, and it wasn't the way you need to go. And you want to come running back to Jesus this morning. Reded rededicate your life. Just lift your hand this morning, if that's you. This morning. Amen. 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 I see those hands. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Well, let's pray this prayer this morning. God, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise your holy, sweet name. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the pain that he had to endure upon that cross for our sake, God. We thank you for that, God. We thank you, God, for those nails that were in your hand, God, Lord. Lord, your feet, God. Lord, the thorns upon your head, Lord. God, we thank you for that, God, because we know, God, that you turn that pain, God, into power and power of the resurrection, that we can live, God. We can trust you, God. We know our Redeemer lives, and we thank you for that, God. Lord, I just pray for the hands that was lifted today, God. Touch them, bless them, anoint them, fill them up, God. I pray this whole congregation, God, will begin to dig a little deeper, Lord. Dig in their pain, dig in their sorrow, dig in their hopelessness, and dig it out of there, God, and dig into you, and dig into truth, and hope, and faith, and joy, and peace, and to the living waters that are flowing every day, God. I thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every day, and great is your faithfulness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.